let's continue with social media and marketing module two at a basic level we were talking about how media changes things at a basic level social media consumers want to exchange information collaborate with others and have conversations it's up to the marketer to decide if engaging in those conversations will make sense if it'll be profitable and it's also up to them to find the most effective method of getting into the conversation and there's no doubt about it many companies are just trying to figure out what to do right now they're still kind of getting their feet wet uh, here's my old company Orita, and they've got a Facebook page everybody has a Facebook page and they ask you to like them on Facebook why would you really want to but again, they're just trying to, to get their feet wet. You know, Heinz Ketchup, you know, doing the same thing. Lots and lots and lots of uh, companies just still trying to figure out what to do with social media. Let's go ahead and categorize media types. There are really three types of media. There's owned media, there's earned media, and there's paid media. Now think of those three things. Owned media, earned media, paid media. Owned media and paid media, you've got more control over. Earned media, you don't. Owned media, as the name implies, you own it. Paid media, well, you don't own it, but you're paying someone else to distribute your message. It's earned media where there's all of the interaction. Traditionally, you know, you've got the traditional media, television, radio, and now you've got the social media, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. You know, the then versus now. Now, the traditional then print radio TV, that is paid media. That's paid media. Now, with social media, well, some of it you can own and some of it that you earn. For example, you know, Facebook, well, you can own your page, but then comments on your page would be earned. Now, earned media would include traditional PR, which is public relations, and we'll look at examples of that in just a second. So it includes traditional PR. It includes what's often referred to as guerrilla marketing, and again, we'll look at that in a second. Traditional WOM, or word of mouth, but now electronic word of mouth, or social media sharing, and people finding your site through search engine optimization, SEO. So let's take those one at a time, starting with traditional PR. One of the great examples of traditional PR is the Pillsbury Bake Off Contest. Now, the Pillsbury Bake Off Contest, lots and lots of uh, people participate to compete against who's the best baker. And literally, they have you know hundreds of people all come together in a central location and literally compete against each other. It generates a tremendous amount of publicity. Uh, Pillsbury gets a lot of media exposure as a result of this at a very, very uh, low cost. People are still using traditional PR very, very successfully, including some so-called tech companies. Uh, Apple uses PR brilliantly. Here's Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, at the introduction of the iPhone X uh, about a month ago. Apple gets an enormous amount of free exposure in traditional media by really creating these events where they introduce new products. Guerrilla marketing is trying to get exposure in unique, sometimes offbeat, unconventional ways. Uh, it's unconventional ways of pursuing conventional goals. Here was, I thought, a, a great example of guerrilla marketing. Uh, to introduce the new season of The Sopranos, they parked about a dozen yellow cabs various places around New York City with an arm sticking out of the trunk, a mannequin arm sticking out of the trunk, uh, right next to the uh, bumper sticker Sopranos only on HBO. That got a lot of people snapping pictures and then sharing that. So they, they got a tremendous amount of exposure relatively inexpensively, just you know leasing a few cabs uh, for a few hours. Here's another kind of interesting example of guerrilla marketing. Need a new barbecue? Call VJ Sales at, and the phone number. They, they simply uh, welded a metal spatula to a grate. You do need to be careful that you're not breaking any laws or anything. If you were to literally do that uh, on uh, 
public property, yeah, you'd be trespassing, but if you did that on private property, which is what was done here, uh, you know, that's okay. But again, you do have to be careful. And let me share with you perhaps the single biggest guerrilla marketing fail, and it was done from Aqua Teen Hunger, Hunger Force, excuse me, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Now, their goal was to promote this new movie, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Their uh, method was to deploy 400 LED light bright displays within 10 major cities. Now, that's a, a, a picture of the light bright display in the lower right hand corner there. Also, to promote Adult Swim, because this was from Adult Swim, the uh, uh, component of uh, that. Uh, Turner Broadcasting Channel. So uh, they were planning on doing it in 10 cities. They started with Boston. Boston was the first city. They put 38 signs up over several days in January 2007. They put them up, but they didn't turn them on. Then they turned them on. They lit them all up. Here's what happened. Some of Boston's residents mistook the devices for explosives and contacted authorities. The city quickly reacted and shut down all major public transportation and spent $500,000 deploying police and bomb-sniffing dogs. Turner Broadcasting, who owned the channel, was fined $1 million from the city of Boston, you know, and also paid $1 million to Goodwill funds to Homeland Security. Yeah, they got exposure, but not the kind of exposure that they wanted. Word of mouth, this is when people are talking about things, and you want to get people talking about things in a good way. Uh, that's what traditional word of mouth is. Now, social media word of mouth is using social media you know, to get them talking about things. If you can get them looking for you, that's the best possible thing. You've got a website, they come looking for you. So obviously, if you've got a website, you want to maximize what you're getting from that, uh, have people look for you and find you. So you want to make sure that your search engine optimization is uh, the ultimate. Generally, it's a good idea to start with objectives. What are we trying to get out of our social media program. And generally, objectives will fall into one of five categories, although a lot of times it's multiple objectives. For many, the first objective is to simply listen and learn. And that, of course, is very, very different from social media because of the interactive nature. Traditional media, you're not learning anything because you're pushing it out in one direction. So for many, the first objective of social media is to just figure out what's going on, listen and learn. You want to build relationships and awareness with your constituents. That's a very, very common social media objective. Of course, lots and lots of people want to promote, so they want to promote their products and services. You want to be considered the good, the good guy, if you will, so you want to manage your reputation. And sometimes uh, you'll even use uh, social media to try to improve customer service. How are you doing? Getting feedback from how you're doing is very, very important. Metrics, that's a term that was uh, uh, identified earlier uh, when we were talking about a couple of other components in market research. But a metric is simply a statistic. It's kind of a fancy word for statistic. A metric is a statistic that lets you know how you're doing. And social media metrics include things like buzz, just how much interaction there is, how many people are looking for you So, in search engines. Uh, participation, if you've got any events going on, how many people are doing that. Uh, sentiment analysis, and just your website metrics, your number of visits, your number of unique visits, uh, your click-through rates, how long they're staying there, and so on. There are a number of different social media tools that you can use, including blogs, microblogs, social network sites, media sharing sites, social news sites, location-based social networking sites, review sites, and even virtual worlds and online gaming. And in the next video, we'll get into each of those.